It's the last Celebrity MasterChef semi-final. We're down to the final hurdle now. Just one more good cook, then. Then you can get into the final, you can feel relaxed for a couple of hours and start panicking again. There is pressure and stress coming at me from every different angle here, but I have a steely determination. And I'm going to go in all guns blazing. I got winner's mentality, you know what I mean? I've done well so far, but that's not good enough. I'm not content. I will be content with the title. Now, just one challenge stands between the best five cooks. How are we looking, Jillian? Mm, not just yet. And their place in the finals. Quite a few notches above anything I've ever had on Celebrity MasterChef. Today, they've got to take it up a notch. This is true pressure, and for good reason, because we want our finalists. Welcome back here, MasterChef Kitchen. Probably now feels like your kitchen. Today, you are cooking for a place in finals week. You have nothing to be worried about as long as you cook to your full potential. Because today, you're not just cooking for Greg and I, but you're also cooking for three renowned restaurant critics. Jay Rayner, Grace Dent, and Jimmy Famarewa. Those three critics will help Greg and I decide who stays and who goes. One hour and 10 minutes, one course, your own food. We have really high expectations. Let's cook. I love the gutsy, tasty food that Neil's cooked throughout the competition. It's fantastic. He's just got to keep it up. Now it is a proper competition. You know, we're one step away from the final. If you go to that, it's like losing to penalties to Germany in the semi-final of the World Cup. Oh. Horrible. Neil, what's going to get you through the finals week? It's going to be chicken Kiev. It's one of them foods where you put it in your mouth and you know straight away, oh, this is going to be nice. Oh. I'm going to serve it with sauteed potatoes and rosemary. Oh, sir, suits me. Do you know what I love about your food? Right. It's a tour around the 1970s. It Do you is. know? Your <laughs> it's great, isn't it? <laughs> there should be a restaurant just called 1970s. I think there's a market. Real chicken Kiev is crispy on the outside with breadcrumbs. Then you've got a layer of moist, wonderful chicken breast without any skin. And in the middle of that, lots and lots of butter, garlic aplenty. If you haven't got garlicky ooze coming out of that chicken, you failed. Vicky's progress has been nothing short of absolutely astonishing. From a great big jewelry bundle of energy to a very measured, accurate, skillful cook. Cooking for food critics should strike fear into the hearts of anyone. And for me, who is relatively new to this game, I'm a wreck. Vicky, what are you making? Spiced duck breast on a celeriac puree with a red wine jus, a cherry cigar, and cabbage. What's a cherry cigar, please? So essentially, you're making like a cherry and orange reduction and walloping it in a bit of phyllo pastry, deep frying them, cigars. Have you timed this? Yeah. It took me so long. <laughs> But I know I need to impress you, and I know I need to impress them out there, so I want to do this. Ducky's cook. 
cherries and duck, absolutely fantastic, lovely combination. Crispy filo pastry, good. That cigar is a beautiful way of delivering those flavours, but that's a lot to do. I'm completely overwhelmed. I'm incredibly um, rushed. Just can't concentrate on one thing. 30 minutes, guys. First plate. Dom understands the classic and fine classics he cooks. He's an experienced cook. He has shown technique and an understanding of flavour. I'm nervous today. I haven't slept very much. Been thinking recipes since 3 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> so I think somehow this is getting to me. Dom, what are you cooking for us? Today I'm doing seared duck breast with apple and cranberry red cabbage with a ponzu and orange liqueur sauce with Topinambur puree. Topinambur is the old name for what we now call Jerusalem artichoke. Yes. Why a duck? I used to love it in the 70s with the good old Bernie in duck and orange, which of course doesn't exist anymore. So I'm hoping to do it proud. I love a duck breast. But I've never seen a sauce like this. He's got an orange liqueur. He's got that Japanese citrus ponzu. He's got balsamic vinegar. Because he's also got sweetness going on with the cabbage. So that is sweet upon sweet. But he's going to have to be careful. I love Greg's ambition. And he's moved towards sophistication. It's fantastic. What are you cooking for us, Greg? Venison loin um, with some mushroom puree. Going to do an onion ash as well. And what is the sauce? Game stock. Bit of red wine, of course, in there. You've got one chance to make it to the next round, and this is one of those days. Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to look cool on the outside. Inside, possibly, I'm a little bit nervous, yeah, say the least. <laughs> That venison, I do not want jelly-like in the middle. It needs to be cooked just enough that it still melts in your mouth and that you don't have to chew on it. Good sauce, a puree, and that onion ash. This is high-end dining he's aiming for here. I like the ambition. This actual dish I've not done. <laughs> what is wrong with me? I'm in a semi-final and I'm just trying a new dish for the first time. gillian has been really bold in this competition. I love his flavours. He does big, big flavours. Dillian, you're doing dessert. <laughs> I'm attempted one. <laughs> it's a chocolate banana fondant with caramelised banana and a little bit of cream to it as well. So we'll get oozy chocolate with caramelised banana in the middle of your fondant? That's the plan. A chocolate fondant with an oozy centre, what a beautiful thing. Accompany the fondant, we've got bananas and caramel. That's a lot of sugar with sweet and cream on the side. John, that is sweet. It's quite a tricky, delicate dish, you know, like you said, I'm not the most delicate person. If I flop it, then I'll just run off into the night. <laughs> They've entered this competition because they think they've got some cooking chops. And I want to find out what sort of a person they are, not when they're doing the thing they're famous for, but when they're at home. I don't want a funny dinner. I don't want a dinner that looks like the person's incredibly good at sport. I'm hungry. It's a lot of pressure when you're used to excelling in one field and you're kind of trying to transfer it to another, and it doesn't always work out. We're about to find out what they do in their spare time <laughs> and whether they're any good at it. Ten minutes left. People laugh at Chicken Kiev, but a Chicken Kiev is very, very satisfying on so many levels. 
don't push out all your butter. Well, there's only one thing that matters here. Is the chicken Kiev going to spit in my eye? <laughs> That's what I want. So the first time we'll know if it works is when we cut into it. Correct. I'm not going to break my art yet. They look really good. Two minutes, Neil. Yeah. What's left to go on? Beans, bacon, crumb, yep. Right. That's a great touch. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Have a look at that, <laughs> Chef! <laughs> Happy! I'm over the moon, Chef! It's a Neil dish, but it's nicely done. Afternoon. Hello. Lunch is served. Amazing. <laughs> Thank you. There we go. Oh, amazing. There we go. Thank you. This is one of my favourites, chicken Kiev. Sauté potatoes, beans, tomatoes with bacon crumb. Enjoy. Nice Thank to meet you. you. Thank you Thank very much. You, Neil. I've done my best. I don't think I could have done any better. I just hope that it's nice and juicy inside the chicken gear, because uh, that's the main thing. Oh, blimey. There's a lake in there. Razor Ruddock's chicken Kiev was absolutely delicious. <laughs> That's quite an accomplished breadcrumb. And the chicken, it's soft. It's perfectly judged. The bacon crumb is nice, really tasty. The potatoes are good. It's, it's just a very straightforwardly pleasing plate of food. If Razor Ruddock invited me to dinner, I'm there. <laughs> yeah. That is fantastic. <laughs> the chicken is moist but crispy on the outside from the crumb. That is lovely. Dilly look done to you. Vicky has set herself an enormous amount to do in an hour. You could spend 45 minutes stuffing a piece of phyllo pastry with a spiced cherry compote. Then you've got to get on with everything else. Vicky, you got five minutes. Can you get this done? No. Nah. What have you got left to do, please? <laughs> Everything. So I think I'm going to just fry off my cabbage. My red wine jus is coming along. I think, essentially, I could get it plated up, but the cigars are going to have to go. Spice duck breast. It'll be interesting to see how far she goes in terms of the spicing. I'd quite like to see some boldness there. Smells good, Vicky. Is it? That's yeah. nice to know. Does that cook nicely? You happy with that? Uh, yeah. It's pink, which, of course, is how it should be. Her red wine jus. Not an easy thing to get right in the short amount of time. I don't want that to be a bit sticky and, and give you serious flavour. It is as good as it's going to get. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Oh. Chin up. Thank you. Hi guys. Hello. Hello. How are you? Good. good. How are you? I'm okay. Excellent. There you go. Oh, fantastic. One for you. There you go, honey. Thank you. This is my spiced duck breast on a bed of celeriac puree, garlic cabbage, celeriac cubes, and a red wine jus. I hope you enjoy. I am disappointed that Vicky's spiced cherry compote cigar has not landed. Really impressed with the spicing and the skin on that duck. The fat has rendered and crisped up really nicely. The celeriac puree is reasonably silky. The cubes cooked through. The cabbage has not been, you know, boiled to death since 1974. The only thing that lets it down is that jus. There's not much real depth to it, and you can taste a bit of raw alcohol knocking around in there. I'm quite impressed with what Vicky's done today. I think that she's put her heart into making this. So, you know, hats off to her. Duck's cooked really nicely, and the spice is absolutely fantastic. And the flavours of that mixed up with the cabbage and the flavours of the celeriac is really, really good. We have a few issues here, technically. The cherry cigar has disappeared. The sauce is bitter and really, really thin. I love her ambition. I think she's just bitten off more than she or anybody could chew. 
I've seen so many people fall prey to trying to do too much, and I fell into the same trap. Nothing will ever stop me from being mad at myself. You happy with venison? Absolutely thrilled with the venison. What's quite striking is that this reads more like the sort of thing I see on menus in restaurants at the moment than any of the others. Venison is tricky. You don't want it to be tough. You want it nicely seared on the outside with a kind of nice pink middle. Onion ash, that is very ambitious. Will that be good? Very nice, Craig. Very nice. That is a beautiful dish. Well done, Greg. Very Thanks, nice. Guys. Greg, that is beautiful. Thank but you. But it very tastes much. good. <sighs> good afternoon, everybody. Hi. How are we? Good. good. So I've cooked for you today a venison tenderloin, mushroom puree, carrot and cabbage as well, an onion ash, and then to accompany it is a game sauce. So I really hope you enjoy. Thank you ever okay. so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Greg. Cheers. Gosh, I wasn't expecting to see anything like this today. This is uh, the type of dish put together by people that are on professional MasterChef. I'm very impressed already. Yeah. It's really, really good. Mm. The, the cooking of the meat is perfect. That game jus works. I mean, it's all lovely and very, very precise and actually quite a few notches above anything I've ever had on uh, Celebrity MasterChef. I think that there are just beautiful bits to it. The mushroom puree especially. Creamy and it's silky. And that lifts the entire plate. The onion ash, it adds a smokiness to it. It kind of grounds the dish. Really, really impressive. Uh, Greg is a seriously uh, talented cook. Venison's cooked beautifully. I love that charred onion dust. I think that's really, really good. John. That looks like I've just sat down to a fine dining lunch. I tried blimmin' hard. <laughs> I really gave it my all today. That was as good as I could have hoped for. I'm thrilled to bits with, with what I created. Uh, Tom, you've got 10 minutes. Yep. Are you happy? Uh, I am at the moment. The key thing to this dish is the cooking of the duck breast. The skin crisp, you want the meat actually pink. Duck cooked? Yes. 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 Lovely. Boom. The thing that I'm looking for is what is he going to do with that orange and ponzi sauce? It has to be delicately balanced, but also lift the whole dish. Quick, 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 quick then. Don't quick, clean it up. Well done. Off you go. OK. Right. Well done, Dom. Woo! <sighs> Hello. There we go. Ooh. Ooh. I have prepared seared duck with an orange ponzu sauce with Jerusalem artichoke and apple and cranberry red cabbage. Great. Enjoy. Thank you. Well Thank you. Mm. That duck is well cooked, mm. and I quite like the Jerusalem artichoke puree. But the red cabbage is it's beyond acidic, and this sauce I've got a fence that needs creosoting. I liked the hit of orange. That citrus worked really well with the savoury of the duck. There are signs here of, you know, a decent cook if he can just kind of stay away from tar-like sauces. That bitter, thick sauce with the ponzu and the balsamic vinegar was quite sweet. But the orange with the sauce and the sweet cabbage as well is, is one too many sweet steps for me. <sighs> uh, I'm exhausted. 
absolutely exhausted. The last, the last 10 minutes were marginal panic stations. But uh, very proud of the plate I produced. Um, I just hope they don't think there's too much sweetness going on there. How long on those fondants? Another four more minutes. Four more minutes. The fondant needs to be soft, but the thing that has to happen is it has to ooze, surely. Are they risen? Um, chicken, no. Yeah, they're just getting there. Look like you did them before? No, no, I don't want him to look like I did them before. All right, okay. <laughs> Getting the cooking time right is hard for one reason and one reason only, because you cannot see what is going on. You can only base it on experience. How are we looking, Jillian? Mm, not just yet. Go on, then, shut the door, then. You've got three minutes left. I'm also quite interested about the caramelised banana. If it has that deep caramel depth of flavour, then great. Right, you ready to go, Jillian? Yep. Good, let's do it. That's it. That's it. Come on. Holding, holding. Go. Holding. Yay! Come on, let's get them out. Let's move it, let's move it. Well done, well done, well done. Oh, nuts. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Chocolate fondant with banana, lime zest, and a vanilla cream. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Ooh. Delicious. It's just. Lovely, soft, melting chocolate pudding that is both rich and remarkable and oozing. I love the banana. The caramelised banana is that brilliant thing because it's got real acidity. I think this is delightful, absolutely delightful. The cream sort of brings it all together really nicely as well. It's kind of really nicely whipped and light, lots of vanilla in there. It's been a good day at the office. Yeah. 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 I love the flavour of the fondant. It's like cocoa-rich chocolate. It's lovely. And the sweetness of the inside I like. That with vanilla cream, I think, is lovely. Hopefully, you've done enough. You can never take these things for granted in competition. You never know, you know, what guys look for, what's what, you know? So, let's see. Fantastic feedback from the guest critics. One goes home and we have to make a decision. I tell you what, this is a tight call. A very, very tight call. For me, the food I wanted to eat the most today came from Neil Ruddock. I thought that chicken was absolutely faultless. As soon as I cut into a piece and saw that garlic sauce oozing out, I thought, that's a dish for me. <laughs> do you have a dish of the day? I do. Greg. The critics thought it was a level above the rest of the contestants, and I agree. Good on him for making a plate that sparkled. I loved Dillian's chocolate fondant. I thought that was fantastic. And he got it right. It was crispy on the outside, it oozing out of the middle, and the three restaurant critics loved it. We have, going through to the next round, Neil, Dillian and Greg, so we are going to lose either Vicky or Dom. I thought Vicky's flavourings on the ducks were superb. A really good blend of spices. Unfortunately, it was missing the cherry cigar and the sauce could have been thicker. Dom's dish, duck was cooked nicely, but a dish like that does need a decent sauce. It was too thick and a little bit too sticky. The orange with sugar across the top and the sweet cabbage as well. It was too sweet for me. I seriously want to stay in now. To say that I got through to the final of Celebrity MasterChef, I think that's an achievement, you know, above and beyond anything I could ever have wished for, even expected. We've cast the days. I know where I stand. 
it's not ideal because <laughs> it's so close. But I've really, really impressed myself to come this far. I want to stay with all my tiny little heart. This is very, very tight. There is very little in this. To all five of you, congratulations. You have done yourselves proud. And you made our decision really tough. Sadly, one of you is leaving the competition. The contestant leaving us. is Dom. Oh, I didn't answer that. Dom. I'm really sorry. That's OK. You are so good. Okay. Thank you very well much. Well done. We've had a brilliant competition. Well Great. done. Great. No, someone enjoyed it. It's been an experience. Cheers. Cheers, Dom. Dom, love you. Miss you, Dom. Cheers, guys. Good luck. Enjoy. I feel disappointed, hugely disappointed. I've been having such good fun. And I really didn't want to go home. But these guys are better than I am. So i um, delighted for them. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, another week with Dillion. No, no. I was really, really disappointed with myself. I don't think I'm being too dramatic. I'm quite surprised I got through. <laughs> you know, I feel good. Everyone here wants to win it, so it would be a good achievement if, if, if I could be the one that come out on top. I didn't think I'd get this far, and I'm nowhere near the finished article, but you never know how far you can go and how, how good a cook you can be. Absolutely over the moon. Thrilled I'm learning, thrilled I'm developing, and hopefully can go on and, and make that final now. Yay! Next time, it's the Celebrity Master Chef Finals. Dillian, we're meant to be a team here, right? Oh. So I'm encouraging you. Oh, perfect. Oh! The president of the government is waiting for us. Okay. It takes a skilled pastry chef for years to learn techniques like that. And at the end, either Dillian, Neil, Vicky, or Greg will be crowned this year's champion.